All right. So now we're doing free code camp, JavaScript algorithms and data structures, JavaScript algorithms and data structures projects, cache register. All right. So this one's uh, definitely the most uh, tedious one of them. So they save for the best for last. All right. Uh, so now we're going to design a cache register drawer function check cache register that accepts purchase price as the first argument. So the price. So this thing right here. Uh, the payment as the second argument. So this cash right here. And then the cash in drawer as the third argument. So the CID right there. Uh, SID is a 2D array listing available currency. All right. So it's going to be something like this where it's going to say pennies and there's a dollar, one cent worth of pennies, nickels, two dollars, five cents worth of nickels and so on. All right. So, uh, the check cash register function should always return an object with a status key and a change key. All right. So something like this status open change, uh, whatever we're giving out. So if it's like 50 cents, we're going to give out uh, 50 cents worth of quarters. All right. Uh, where are we? So we're going to return status insufficient funds change empty array if the cash drawer is less than the change due or if we cannot return the exact change. So if this is like there's only like 50 cents in here and they give us 100 uh, for a for a $20 purchase, well, we're not going to be able to make change, right? Uh, we're going to return status closed change uh, whatever we're going to put. We're going to put the whole. Uh, what are we going to do? Status closed, and we're going to put the whole uh, cash and drawer in there when the cash and drawer uh, is equal to the change. Basically, that's what this says. When with cash and drawer as the value for the change, if it is equal to change due, all right. And otherwise, we're going to return status open, and then the change, uh, like we said at the beginning, all right, with the change due in coins and bills sorted in highest to lowest order as the value of the change key, all right. So here are the currency units, and then here's an example of the cash and drawer array, all right? So first things first, we're going to have to make an object with all of these currency units in it so that we can access it, so we can deal with uh, this thing right here. So let's get rid of this stuff right here, and let's do something like this. Let's say um, let currency unit equal an object, right? So that object, well, to make this, we're pretty much going to take this array right here, but not the uh, array within an array, but just all these uh, sub arrays. We're going to get that, put that here, get all these, tab it over twice like that, and we're going to get rid of all of these, uh, whoops, we'll get rid of all of these brackets to start with. And then after that, Hold on. I would do a 3000 on this, a 3000 speed, but there's a little bit more to it. So after that, we're going to take all these commas and turn them into uh, colons, right? So, yeah, that part needed to go faster. Uh, so now that we've got this thing going on, uh, we can head on to the next part. So we're going to say uh, down here after that, we're going to let the change do equal the cash minus the price. All right. So it's going to be cash minus price. And so let's do a console.log, console.log, change do. All right. You'll see at the beginning for this first one, it's going to be 50 cents because they're giving us uh, a $20 bill and the price is $19.50. All right. And then also we're going to do uh, let total cash and drawer equal. And then we're going to add up every single one of these uh, dollar amounts and uh, sum it up. Basically, that's what this is going to do. So we're going to do uh, cash and door in drawer dot reduce because we're summing this thing up and we're going to have as the arguments for the reduce method, sum and element. All right because the elements are going to be uh, these things right here. And what we're going to do is say, um, what are we going to do? We're going to have this arrow right here and we're going to say sum plus element at at one. 
because element at zero is the name of it. Element at one is the amount. Uh, and then we're going to have to make that, uh, we're gonna have to make the initial value zero like this, right? So let's get the console.log total cash and drawer. And you see it's something ridiculous looking, right? And you know why? Because look at this, let's do uh, 0.1 plus 0.2. Well, you see, JavaScript doesn't handle decimals that well, so we're gonna have to deal. We're gonna have to deal with that. So uh, for that, what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna wrap this thing up in parentheses, and we're gonna use the dot to fixed method on this. So we're gonna say dot. Actually, we don't need to wrap this up in parentheses uh, because it's already that's already one thing. We're gonna say dot to fixed two like that. And you see it works like this. Now let's go over the two fix method. I don't think we've gone over that. So the two fix method of number values formats this number using fixed point notation. So if we put two fixed uh, two on this one, it, it rounds it to uh, it rounds it up. This one's going to round down and whatnot. But the thing about that is it's going to return a string, right? So if we say uh, type of in front of this type of you see it's a string right here. So now we're gonna wrap this whole thing up in parentheses like this. And we're gonna say a uh, number. And now you see the type of the total CID is a number. So that's how we take care of that. And we have to do it. All right, so now that we've got that, let's actually um, widen this so that we can get all the, uh, so that it doesn't go down or anything like that. So now that we've got this action going on, uh, let's start off with some if statements. Well, let's continue with some if statements, all right? So let's say if. So if uh, the total CID, total CID, this thing right here, if this is less than change do, what we're going to do is we're going to return this insufficient funds thing right here. And I'm just not gonna, we're at that level. We can act like this is in our notes and we're just gonna copy and paste, all right? Uh, so now we're gonna do an else if, else, and then let's just, instead of uh, writing that out, let's just take this from here to here, all right? And let's drop this off. So else if uh, these equal each other, what we're going to do is we're going to change this to closed. And we're going to have the change be uh, the cash in the drawer, CID. They're going to get everything in the cash drawer. So everything right here, right? So now we've got those two things. So we've got this one taken care of and we've got this one taken care of, right? So now let's take care of this one where we actually return some change, right? So now we're going to do an else. And for this one, uh, we're going to start off by declaring a variable to uh, throw some, throw these things in, uh, uh, what, what should we call it? Uh, the change array. So let's say else, we're going to say uh, let change array equal an empty array, right? And we're going to push the stuff we need to into here when the time comes, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to iterate through the cache and drawer, but we're going to iterate backwards because we need to make it uh, highest to lowest. All right, so we're going to say four. Let I equal, and since we're iterating through this one backwards, we're going to say let I equal SID dot length minus one. So we're going to start at this index right here, right? And then after that, we're going to say while while uh, what is it? While I is greater than or equal to zero because we're going to go down to this zeroth one right here. What we're going to do is say uh, I minus minus. All right. So we're going to start here at uh, SID dot length minus one, which is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to start at 8, then 7, then 6, 5, 4, three, 2, 0, right here, right? So now that we've got that going on, we're going to go inside the for loop. So 
For this for loop, we're going to have to uh, declare a bunch of variables, all right? So we're going to say let currency unit name equal. And this is going to be uh, the cash in drawer. It's going to be this thing right here. So we're going to say CID at, uh, at I at zero, all right? At zero like that. So it's going to be like penny and whatnot. So let's do console.log. So what we go console.log and we'll get currency unit name. All right. So now we've got all these right here. Uh, so now let's make another one. Let's say let's uh, cash total equal the cash in drawer at uh, at I at one. All right. And so when we get this cash total, we're going to put that in here. And then we're going to say cash currency unit value total. Should we go to currency unit value total? Let's call it that. Currency unit value total. <laughs> value total. It's getting a little bit much, right? But it is what it is. And so we've got all these right here. We got uh, every single one of these right here. This is at, at uh, I at one. Okay. So now after we do that, we're going to say, uh, <coughs> pardon me. We're going to uh, declare another one. We're going to declare, what should we declare? Uh, we're going to say, let currency unit value equal, and this one's going to be the currency unit. So it's going to be this at the name. All right. So let's get this and boom. So we got 160, 20. Whoa, 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 whoa. Currency unit value. Unit name. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Up here, we need to change these also because uh, this right here is the total value of the drawer. So we're going to need to change the, the pennies to one, two. Uh, we're going to have to just delete this stuff and change it, right? So the one is now one, five is now five, 10 is now 10, 20 is now 20, and 100 is still 100, right? So these, good thing we did that. that uh, console.log, right? That's why we want like to check where we go. Uh, so now these are all the correct uh, denom the correct values for the denomination, right? So now that we've got that going on, <laughs> that was almost a huge mess up. Glad I'm, glad I'm doing this. Uh, so now we're going to do uh, let currency unit amount, all right? So this is the amount of currency units. So like, uh, like, 101 pennies and whatnot, right? And we're going to have that equal uh, cash total divided by currency unit value. What do you mean cash? currency unit value total? This divided by this. All right. And let's look at this real quick. And as we see, we still have that two fixed problem. So we're going to need to wrap this thing up in, in, uh, Parentheses. We're going to have to call it dot two fixed dot two. Pardon me. Dot two fixed zero. All right. And then we're going to have to change this whole thing into a number. Right. Actually, we don't have to wrap that up. Uh, we can just say number in front of it. So number. And let's stretch this a little bit more. And let's also say uh, type of, just to make sure. Type of, so there's still strings, so I guess we do have to wrap this thing up. So let's wrap this thing up in parentheses like that. And now they're all numbers, all right? That's why we test while we go. All right, so now we've got that going on and we've got all these amounts. So we've got 101 pennies, uh, $100 bill and whatnot. So now let's uh, go to the next one. And we're going to say let 
currency unit units to return. So like if we're going to return like 20 pennies, not 20 pennies, like four pennies, uh, two nickels, two dimes and whatnot, you know, not two nickels, but one nickel, two dimes and whatnot. Right. And so we're going to have that equal zero to start off with. All right. Because we're going to add to that. So like if we have one penny, two penny, three pennies, we're going to add them all to this thing right here. All right. All right. So let's keep going. So now we're going to do a while. All right. So let's say while and we're going to say while the change due. So while this thing right here is greater than the currency unit value. All right. So while this is worth uh, more than this. All right. So let's look at what a currency unit value looks like again. And then let's also say what change do change do. Well, so while this is greater than this. Hold on. Value. Sorry, this is taking so long, but it's a long one. Uh, so while this change due is is bigger than currency unit value, like in this case where put where 50 cents is greater than uh, the quarter, what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, change due, change due minus equals the uh, currency unit value, currency unit value, we'll just get this, change due minus equals this. Uh, and look, we've already, we know we're going to have to do something with the, uh, we're going to have to do something with the two fix two. So we're going to have to say change due now equals change due now equals uh, change due dot two fixed two. And we're going to wrap this up in parentheses again. And in front of that, we're saying number. All right. And uh, let's do a, since we've still got this going on, let's do a type of while we're at it, type of. And so they are still numbers, so we're good on that. And now let's come down here and let's do the next thing. Uh, we're going to say currency amount, currency unit amount, minus, minus. So we're going to subtract uh, from this right here. So we'll say minus, minus. And then we'll say current, we'll say uh, currency units to return plus plus, all right? So let's come in here and we're gonna re replace that and replace this, all right? So the currency units amount amounts, uh, here they are right here after we take care of all this stuff. And so there's still 100 and there were 17 uh, whatever these were, and we take one out. Huh? What? Currency units to return. Why would we do that? Anyway, let's keep going. Uh, then we'll see what this is. What's the deal with that? Why are these changing? We should just change the quarters. Uh, anyway, we'll see. We'll see what's going on in just a little bit. All right. So let's go if. So next we're going to do if. Let's take this and comment it out because it's distracting me. We'll come back to it in a minute if it's no good. Uh, so if currency units to return, if this... is greater than zero. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Back up, I know what's the problem. So it's not only this, but we also have to say, and currency unit amount needs to be greater than zero.
Well, it, didn't, it still didn't do anything. Oh, whatever. Anyway, let's cut. Let's comment this out. All right, so let's come down here and say uh, if if the uh, currency units to return is greater than zero. All right, so that if there are currency units to return, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do change R. We're going to push into the array, not push. And we're going to push the array. We're going to have the currency name, currency unit name, comma. And then we're going to also put uh, the currency units to return times the uh, currency unit value, this thing right here. Right, and let's go. Let's do a console.log on change r. Hopefully, it's still good because this is not this is kind of vexing. Let's say change r, change r quarter. Why, why, what's the deal? What did I do wrong? Currency unit value total. Divided by this. Give me a second. All right. Okay. So off by one, right? What's the off by one? Well, look here. Off by one penny. Look here. Change duties to be greater than or equal to <laughs> currency unit value. Ah, uh, yeah, debugging, right? So anyway, we're back at it. So we've got change R now looks like this uh, quarter uh, 50 cents worth, all right? So let's get back to it. Uh, so now we've got this if statement taken care of. Let's get rid of this uh, console.log. We'll use it again later. Uh, so now that we've got that taken care of, we're going to come down here and let's say... Uh, we've got 50, we owe 50 cents, but all we have is a dollar in the cash register. So we're going to have to do another, uh, we're going to have to do another one of these insufficient funds thing. If we only have a dollar while, while we need quarters. So we're going to say if, come down here, if change due, where's change due? If change due is greater than zero what we're going to do is we're going to uh return this thing right here this this same thing right here so we'll copy that and drop it off in here right and now we're just going to uh return the this status open thing right here so we'll come down here uh after this if statement, and we'll say return. Uh, let's just take this while we're at it. We'll return, and then we'll change this to open, like that. And what we'll return is the change array, right? So change R, like that. All right, and so now let's wrap this thing up in parentheses, and let's see what we got. Should be a quarter 50 cents. So let's say console.log, console.log, quarter 50 cents. That looks good. Let's hope that it keeps looking good when we run the test. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> looks good. And submit it. All right. So that's the end of JavaScript algorithms and data structures certification. All right. So now we're on to front end libraries, front end development libraries, and we'll see you next time. Oh, also, if you need more practice on that stuff, just go check out the, the uh, Code Wars. Uh, just go to Code Wars and check out the videos and whatnot, right? And we'll see you next time.